What's the strangest rule you've seen in a friend's house? Story 1. I had a roommate who was very particular about her home. She called it OCD, but I don't like throwing around that term. She was never really diagnosed and coped pretty well most of the time. She always said that she didn't expect me to follow her strange rules, but I could tell it stressed her out. So I just did my best to remember and follow some of the rules so she didn't freak out as much. All towels had to be folded the right way and stored in a specific order. They also had to be the same color. I had to hide my towels in my own room because she couldn't stand to see my brightly colored towel amongst her gray ones. Shampoo and soap bottles had to face the same way with the label outward. Cans in the cupboard had to be arranged similarly. If the vacuum track started fading, it was time for another round. There were times she felt the need to vacuum at 3 a.m. Shoes had to point in the same direction, be in pairs, be sorted from largest to smallest, and also sorted by color. I can't remember how the colors went. I never got that one right. When she felt stressed at work, she would tear apart the house and clean everything. I couldn't be in the way, so I either stayed in my room or left the house. Her cleaning binges could last eight hours or longer. She refused to use Tide laundry soap because she believed it left a coating on her clothes that illuminated under a black light. I didn't have the heart to tell her that almost all soap does that. The same night, she turned the light onto the carpet. She was up until 5 a.m. cleaning all the carpets in the house. She was also pretty superstitious and hated it if I brought anything into the house that could be associated with the occult. I had to hide a lot of incense, candles, necklaces with charms, and some books. Lord of the Rings would have sent her over the edge. Funny thing is, I lived there again. At least the house was always clean. Having a roommate who randomly turns everything into chaos and then redeems herself to making all the clutter disappear is something else. Just gotta be careful when they go snooping and start throwing your stuff away as well. Story 2 I used to have sleepovers at my friend's house when we were little, but here's the strange part. His mother had this thing about making sure we took a dump every day. She'd heard stories about, well, kids' insides getting all messed up if they didn't use the bathroom enough. So every night I'd head to the bathroom, stand in front of the mirror for a few minutes doing who knows what, flush, and then go back out. Staying there felt really odd. And back in my college days, my roommates and I had this quirky rule we called no lifetime. It was as simple as it sounds. The television could never be tuned into the lifetime channel. But here's where it gets interesting. One of our roommates had a girlfriend who often stayed over, and she had a penchant for swinging the channel to Lifetime. If any of us happened to walk into the room and spotted Lifetime on the screen, we'd probably turn off the TV and assertively declare, no Lifetime, even if we were just passing through. Let's just say we weren't exactly fans of her, and our disapproval showed. Surprisingly, this rule managed to survive in every house I've lived in since then. Although I'm a bit more lenient now, as I'll allow my girlfriend to indulge in Lifetime as long as I'm not in the room. The funny thing is, it all began as a joke, but somehow evolved into this surprisingly intense rule. I remember a moment from years ago when I was living with my ex. She had a friend over, they were watching TV, and her friend dared to change it to Lifetime. My girlfriend, in a fit of determination, shouted, No Lifetime! That was the moment I realized I had won. Story 3 My friend's family had this strict no picky eaters rule. It was pretty straightforward. Everyone eats the same food, no exceptions. Now here's the kicker. I had a bunch of allergies, especially when I was younger, like lactose and egg intolerance, and they hit me pretty hard. So one day when I went over for lunch, guess what's on the menu? egg salad sandwiches and milk. I'm like, oh, I can't eat this, I'm sorry. Do you have peanut butter? I'll make my own sandwich, no trouble at all. But nope, I was told I couldn't leave the table until I finished my plate. While the other kids wrapped up their meal and took off to play, there I was, sitting like a trooper, feeling sicker by the minute, slowly nibbling away at that sandwich, bite by bite. I had to finish it before I could go. See, don't you feel better now that you're full? It wasn't so bad, they said. Then you guessed it, I puked. The smell of egg salad is the worst in the world. Story 4 I had a friend whose mom had this thing about sitting on the floor. Never on a chair, couch, bed, or any other piece of furniture. I remember going to her house once and daring to sit down in her bed. Well, that was a big mistake. She flipped out, made me get off it, and then spent several minutes meticulously smoothing the sheets to make it look perfectly flat again. It's like her mom had this kids are unclean mantra going on, and it didn't matter if we'd just taken a bath and were wearing clean clothes. But that's not all on the quirky rule front. I've got a family member who's all about the no pants dragging on the ground rule. When you step inside their house, it's not just about taking off your shoes. You've got to roll up your pants too. I thought I'd played it safe once by bringing a pair of jeans fresh out of the dryer, never worn outdoors, and changing into them when I arrived. Nope, she still shot me those disapproving looks. Psst, guess what? This video is sponsored by none other than me and my awesome crew at Rufus Rugs. We're the masters of creating custom hand-tufted rugs that truly capture who you are. Whether you're looking to turn one of our intriguing thumbnails into a rug, for purely academic reasons, of course, or you're eager to transform your room with some epic anime-inspired designs, we can get it done for you. These are all handmade by me and the team from Canada. No dropshipping BS here. Real, handmade custom rugs by me and my friends. Click the first link in the description to learn more. Story 5 I was over at my classmate's house for a project, and on our way there, we swung by a store to grab some snacks. We tackled our schoolwork first, but then we got a bit sidetracked, goofing around while munching on those snacks. 
All was good until her mom made a dramatic entrance and totally lost it over those snacks. But here's the twist. It wasn't just about eating them. It was because those snacks left behind crumbs that, apparently, had desecrated their otherwise spotless home. So my friend had to drop everything and bust out the vacuum cleaner to give the entire house a thorough cleaning, ensuring not a single crumb was left behind. After that, she gathered up the nearly full vacuum bag, the empty snack wrappers, and even the half-full contaminated kitchen trash bag. Then she had to make a polite request to one of the neighbors to let her toss it all in the garbage bin because, well, no trace of that kind of food was allowed on their property after sunset. I got picked up by my mom, and as I was leaving, they were deep into some kind of purification ritual. My friend was there, praying for forgiveness for potentially sullying their home. Turns out they were strictly religious. There was this strict rule about not having leave-in foods in their house or on their property during a specific time. I can't recall all the details, but I do remember it was a huge deal. And every crumb had to vanish from the property as soon as possible. Story 6 Let me share a story that led to some unusual house rules in my grandparents' household. They would often tell their grandchildren to be cautious about staying outdoors late at night, and the tale behind these rules goes like this. Back when my grandfather was a young man, he and a buddy decided to hit up a nightclub in the city. They did what you'd expect on a guy's night out, drank, sang, and talked the night away. Eventually, it came time to decide when to leave. My grandfather wanted to head home early to be with my grandmother, while his friend was all about waiting until the bar closed. They settled on leaving at exactly midnight, but my grandfather had a nagging feeling and suggested they wait a few more minutes. His friend brushed it off as superstitious nonsense. On their way back to their respective apartments, they stumbled upon a strange sight under a street lamp. A man's shadow stretched across the road, one leg on one side, the other on the opposite. As they got closer, the shadow shifted, as if making way for them to pass. My grandfather stayed silent and walked on, but his friend, well, he was pretty drunk and started hurling insults and curses at the shadow, berating it for blocking their path. You know how alcohol can cloud your judgment and fuel your bravado? They passed the figure, my grandfather still silent, his friend loud and rowdy. They reached their apartments, my grandfather went to sleep. Just before daybreak, my grandmother woke him up in a panic. His friend's wife was on the phone, hysterical and terrified. My grandparents rushed to their friend's apartment and found him in bed, his wife in tears. He had completely lost his voice. Tragically, he never spoke again and passed away at a young age a few years later. In the old country, one that no longer exists today, there were countless sayings and superstitions handed down through the generations. Over time, fewer people believed in them, and much of the mystery faded away. But my grandfather held fast to one lesson. Keep your wits about you and be cautious around midnight and noon. Now, while this story might sound wild and spine-chilling, the kind of thing you'd tell a teenager to make them come home early, I believe it with all my heart. My grandfather was a man of stories, and he was always honest about which were jokes and tall tales. Stories like this one, though, he took seriously. I've scoured the internet in search of similar tales, but I've never found any. It's possible this story of the shadow, which they called Father Midnight, was unique to a few Romanian villages in the Bannet region. I can't say for sure. They haven't returned there since my grandfather's passing. Still, something in me feels right about avoiding exactly midnight or noon, even if it's just by a minute or two. Not all strange house rules have no right reason behind them. Like this one, many have backstories prompting the need to be cautious when staying out late. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to show some love by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. Now let's continue. Story 7 My pal got this rule at his house that's, well, kinda unique. He's got to get the green light from his dad before chowing down on anything in the kitchen. It's like a food lockdown over there. So one Friday night, our crew was all set to hit the town. We thought, hey, let's set up our buddy. And we did just that. But here's the kicker. He dropped the bombshell on us. He said he couldn't make it because he got grounded. Yep, our Friday night plans just went up in smoke. Naturally, we were curious, like, dude, what went down this time? And here's where it gets interesting. He said, I snuck in a bowl of cereal when the old man wasn't home. I mean, seriously? A bowl of cereal? I couldn't wrap my head around it. I've heard some crazy reasons for getting grounded, but this one takes the cake. Story 8 Here's this wild one. I was at my friend's place one day, just hanging out, but then out of the blue, my friend said something unexpected. She told me I had to leave because she had this rule. No guests allowed unless she knew they had insurance. I mean, seriously? I wasn't planning on skateboarding through the living room or anything. It was just a regular visit, and I had no idea insurance was on the guest list criteria. Story 9 Let me tell you about this one time I was at this guy's house. I needed to use the restroom, so I asked him, Hey, can I use your bathroom? And he hits me with, Sure, but you gotta sit down to pee in this house. Now, I wasn't in the mood to argue about his rules, so I just played it cool, nodded my head, and then promptly went to the bathroom and peed standing. Story 10 I live with a bunch of musicians. We had this one golden rule, and it was as straightforward as it gets. No singing at the table. Now you might wonder, why on earth would we need such a rule? Well, when you've got a gang of musicians chowing down on some delicious grub, sooner or later, one of them starts humming or singing to themselves without even realizing it. It's like a musical reflex, you know? The best part? Being the first one to belt out, Hey! No singing at the table! It might sound like a silly rule, but it added a hilarious twist to our mealtime. Good times. You had to be there to fully appreciate the fun. Story 11. I went over to a schoolmate's house for dinner one day, and let me tell you, 
It was quite a unique experience. His mom had this thing where she'd cut everything on your plate into these teeny tiny bits before handing it over, and there was a strict spoons-only policy for eating. Now you might wonder, why in the world would someone do that? Well, here's the story behind it. Apparently, her oldest daughter had a pretty scary incident when she was a teenager. She choked on something while eating. So as a result, the mom made it a household rule. It didn't matter if it was burger night or hot dog night. You were still getting those itty-bitty bites and a trusty spoon. I cannot imagine how long it would take to finish a meal in that house. Story 12. My grandpa worked at Pepsi, and let me tell you, it was a rule written in stone. No Coke products allowed in the house. So one day, my grandma and I were driving back home, and we decided to stop at a convenience store. She handed me some cash and asked me to grab her a Pepsi. Easy task, right? Well, here's the twist. The store only had Coke, so I thought, why not? And grabbed a Coke, paid up, and jumped back into the car. And then, bam, a holy meltdown of epic proportions unfolded. My grandma went full on ballistic. She screamed at me the entire way home, convinced that I had done it on purpose to hurt her. We pulled up to her house and she was in tears. All this drama over a can of Coke? I tell you, I had no idea just how seriously they took their Pepsi loyalty until that fateful day. Story 13. Back in the day when my stepdad was still with us, he had these two rules. First, when it came to cleaning up spills, there was a strict no kitchen roll policy. Apparently that stuff was too expensive for his liking. Instead, we were expected to grab those damn cloths that inevitably left marks everywhere. Go figure. And if you wanted a refreshing glass of orange juice or lemonade, you had to abide by his, you can only have 20% orange juice mixed in your lemonade. He believed that going beyond that percentage would waste the precious juice. He didn't quite grasp that some of us preferred a weaker mix. And the irony? Not having lemonade around meant using up more orange juice in the end. Story 14. During my college years, I used to visit my friend at his parents' house during the summer months when he was living there. They had two rather peculiar house rules that I'll never forget. Firstly, we couldn't open any window in the house, not even the bathroom window, ever. This was the case even when it was significantly cooler outside than inside during the sweltering summer. Secondly, we weren't allowed to close our bedroom doors at night. The reason? So that my friend's parents' cat could have unrestricted access to all rooms at all times. Let me tell you, this made it quite challenging to get a good night's sleep. What with no fresh air from the windows and the cat sauntering over us in bed while we tried to catch some sleep. Story 15. I experienced this at my ex's place. So instead of tossing their leftover food in the trash like normal folks, they decided to become champions of balcony food flinging. I couldn't help but ask them, why on earth do you do that? And you know what they said? They were like, it keeps the bugs away. Can you believe it? They genuinely thought that throwing half-eaten sandwiches all right outside their door was some sort of pest control. Sounds like they're trying to create a new insect repellent. Talk about getting rid of bugs inside the house with a balcony buffet. Story 16. I slept over at a friend's house in grade school one time. He prepared us a bowl of cereal the next morning for breakfast. Not thinking anything of my behavior, I didn't finish the milk. I just never used to. I don't know. He was like, you, uh, gonna finish that? Uh, oh, I, uh, I don't think so. Does that matter? He panicked. Absolutely panicked. I think he put it down the toilet before his parents came back into the room. I don't know what the rule was exactly, but finish your milk or die would be my guess based on his reaction. I still feel bad about it. I was like eight and didn't think. Story 16. This story revolves around a rather unusual house rule. If you're angry, frustrated, or upset and want to break something, then... Do not break computers, electronic equipment, anything with a screen, etc., or anything that is irreplaceable, has sentimental value, or costs more than about 50 pounds, or is a personal item belonging to another person. Make sure you give adequate warning to avoid unnecessary alarm and clear the area to avoid hitting anyone. Clean up your mess. These rules, which were prominently displayed in the refrigerator door, were accompanied by some other equally peculiar ones. Within these rules, which were written on the refrigerator door, along with some other strange rules, you were allowed to smash, break, and throw things. If you needed to, you know, if you felt the urge. Ever had a bad day? Well, this was the perfect excuse. Excuse me, I'm going to throw a plate at the wall. Tabitha, mind out of the way. Smash. There, that's better. I'll just go fetch the dustpan and brush. That rule was both absurd and fantastic. What a way to turn your home into a rage room to relieve all that stress. And I'd have to say it was smart to specify not to break things that would cost a fortune. You don't want to add insult to injury, right? Story 17. The family who used to babysit me when I was young had this rather peculiar rule. No drinking during meals. And I don't just mean soda, juice, or milk. They meant no water until your meal was completely done. This always struck me as insane because we would often be summoned inside for supper or lunch after playing outside in the summer heat, and we weren't allowed to take a sip of anything until we sat down and polished off our plates. What made it even more baffling was that this rule didn't seem to apply to the father of the family. He would often enjoy a beer during meals, which left me scratching my head in confusion. Story 18. Not in a house, but in a dorm room. I encountered one heck of a strange rule. These two guys had this massive list of words that were absolutely banned within the room. Now, some of these words were your typical swear words, not because they were morally opposed to them, but because they believed using a bunch of swear words was just a lazy way to communicate. But here's where it gets even weirder. 
Words like good and bad were also on the blacklist. They didn't exactly go ballistic if you slipped up and used one of these words, but it definitely made for some interesting conversations. Trying to steer clear of those so-called lazy words while you were visiting, it really was a challenge. Story 19. At my friend's parents' house, everything was covered in plastic. You couldn't just walk wherever you pleased. There was a plastic walkway to follow. Even the furniture had its own protective plastic layer, and sitting on it meant you had to perch on the edge to avoid any potential wrinkles. And don't even get me started on the bathroom rules. There were specific towels designated for use, and you had to hang them up in exactly the same way every time. I'll never forget the time I got scolded for hanging one towel a tiny bit off. Story 20. During high school, I had this friend whose mom had this obsession with keeping the walls and floors pristine. I'll never forget the first time I visited her house. As soon as I walked in, my friend leaned to me and said, don't touch the walls and make sure you have socks on. It was like her house had its own set of commandments. Well, you can guess what happened next. It became an unspoken challenge for the rest of the evening. I mean, who could resist testing the limits of that no-touch rule? Let's just say we may have left a few invisible fingerprints in our wake that night. Story 21. It's about the house I used to live in. It had two rules that were seriously out there. First off, we had this wild rule called, party fouls result in an immediate loss of an article of clothing. Yeah, you heard that right. If you messed up at a party, you'd better be prepared to part ways with a piece of your attire. It made for some hilarious or maybe slightly awkward moments, depending on how you look at it. And then there was the second rule, which was oddly specific. No drinks on the right side of the computer desk. If broken, see rule one. It's like they knew that drinks and computer equipment don't mix, so they came up with a rule just for the desk. And if you accidentally spilled a drink there, well, you guessed it. You were saying goodbye to an article of clothing. Hey, if you've reached the end of this video, then you might as well check what happens when you don't take kids seriously. Story 5 is something you won't want to miss. See you there.